Hey, you found us right on time too. We're just about ready to get started. Go ahead and grab yourself a seat anywhere you like. Popcorn is in that back corner over there. I'm going to be your host. I'm John Zadar. This is Wednesday, December 21st, and this is On Top and Hot. What we do on this show is we like to focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. We are looking for those stocks that have the potential to make us some money. Now, I love trading penny stocks because they are on every market, every single exchange, because a penny stock is any stock under five bucks. They're everywhere. So don't be surprised if we look at a major exchange stock, but it will be under five bucks. Now, I do most of my research in OTC stocks. That right there is part of my research. That is six days worth of news from the OTC market. Oldest is up at the top, newest is down here at the bottom. And this is prime news, folks. These are your mergers, acquisitions, bankruptcies, uplistings, the real good stuff. So take your time. Go through that. I promise you, you're going to find some things that interest you. Now, when I'm doing research on OTC stocks specifically, this is my homeboy site right here, the otcmarkets.com website. This is an outstanding site. All that news right there, folks, I get it here. I just go right there to news and it comes in as it's released chronologically, so I don't do no surfing to find that. I don't do surfing for most of my information because this site is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all that pertinent, important information we're constantly looking for. So honestly, don't waste your time running around the internet looking for current information. Just come here. That's all they post. Swear to God, it's going to save you a lot of time and probably a a lot of frustration. So let's see what our OTC market did today. That's not looking good at all. That's worse than yesterday. Cross our fingers we get this magical bump. God darn. Horrible folks. Our dollar volume fell from 1.4 billion down to 1.3. This is getting dire. I'm not kidding folks. This is scary now. Share volume. We were at 7 billion last week, 5 billion yesterday. Now we're under 5 billion. This is more than scary. This is going into a coma. Trades, we are hovering right around 250,000 trades like we've been doing for months. So the market doesn't look like it's doing any sort of turnaround right now. Thank God individual stocks still have the right to pop. And I've got some that were popping today. Some of them were popping on big catalysts that was coming out in news presses. Others were popping over what I like to call dime a dozen catalysts. These are little catalysts that happen every single day that can make you really good money. Let me show you what I got. Just so happens, first stock we're going to take a look at is on the major exchange. It is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. It's under five bucks. This is ticker CEN, SEN, also known as Central Electric Group Limited. Now, SEN came on the market about a year ago through a reverse merger, and they work with electric vehicles. And today they came out with some big news. It was really big. You can tell by looking at the charts. Not only did the price run, but the volume poured in heavy, real heavy. And what we're looking at now on the charts is a perfect setup for a breakout. She finished the day at about 40 and a half cents with 52% gains. Now, when we're talking about NASDAQ stocks, you do have to concern yourself with the price. They have what's called a minimum bid price requirement on the major exchanges. The price cannot come under a dollar and stay there for too long. If they're there too long, they'll get a warning. They normally get about six months to get that price over a dollar. Has to stay over a dollar for 10 to 20 consecutive days. Once they do that, they're out of hot water. Well, I jumped into the filings. I have not seen any warnings come into the company yet. Looks like about 45 days they've been under a dollar. But you do need to take that into consideration. So what does this company do? Well, looking at a description of one of their news presses, they tell us that Central Electric Group is a leading designer and manufacturer of electric light and medium duty commercial vehicles. Central's Purpose-built ECVs are designed to serve a variety of organizations in support of city services, last mile delivery, and other commercial applications. So what sort of relative volume was around this company's big news today? Not a bad jump. She went from 4 million to 46 million, looking at 11 times her normal volume. Share structure on this company. 
Well, we got no information on her float here whatsoever. I did some searching around. Looks to be about 168 million. Not terribly high. Not a low float, but it's not extreme. We can live with that. Financials. All right, the money you're seeing here is not theirs. Remember I told you they just got on the market at the beginning of this year. Well, none of this is for 2022. So none of that money is theirs. And when we look at their money, well, there's nothing on the board yet. Absolutely zilch. But the news that came out today does more than infer on income. They're definitely going to be making money. And I think maybe that's why all the volume was pouring in. Let's take a look at our disclosures. Our most recent disclosure is a 6K. These can be nice. I'm not quite sure what this says, but let's just jump in it real quick. They're normally not too big. Just come right down, entry into material definitive agreement. That's good news. They tell us here that the company and their wholly owned subsidiary has entered into a share purchase agreement with Mosoff, a German company, and the German company invested 1.7 million euro. So you got a big investor coming in. That's good news too. Wasn't even aware of that. Now let's take a look at the news because that is where all the activity that happened today came from. This is the news right here. Let's just jump on into that. So the news press that came out today tells us that Central Electric Group Limited, a leading EV technology company with advanced market validated electric commercial vehicles, today announced it has begun shipments of the Logstar 260, the multi-purpose all-electric commercial vehicle, and the Logstar 100 to European markets. The first deliveries are ahead of schedule of the previously announced target date of the first quarter of 2023. So we see them making cars, we see them shipping cars, and they're even ahead of schedule. Well, you know they're going to get paid for all those vehicles, so they're going to be a revenue-making company now. They tell us that their cars have passed the tests over there in the EU, and both vehicles are eligible for sale in all 27 EU member states and other countries that adopt EU vehicle standards. That's a huge market they have just entered into. And as you were seeing in that video, they also have autonomous driving vehicles. They hook up to your, your phone and you can actually tell the car where to go just by getting on your phone. Doop, and there goes the vehicle. Somebody needs a ride, just send the car to them. How neat is that? So let's go take a look at that chart. I think you're going to like what you see. A ton of volume came in today and she looks like she is set up for one heck of a breakout. So we're going to take a look at this penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker CENN, Central Electric Group. And of course, we're doing our charting on TOS. This is the free trading platform that TD Ameritrade gives you for free just for signing up for their free trading account. And all you got to do is keep your account open. It's just that simple. So we are looking at a six month, four hour chart here for CENN. We have a high bubble of $2.27 back in July. And yesterday we had a low bubble of 26 cents. And I do believe that that is a 52 week low. It absolutely is. And woo, look at our high for the 52 weeks, $7.80. She had two months of falling here and fell all the way down to $1.20. You can see our volume is growing here. It is growing and got very, very strong today. Looking back at that six month, four hour chart, coming in just to our zone, you can see the price was underneath the nine day SMA, crushed the 20, got on top of the 50, and is sitting on top of her 50 right now. And you got a better picture of that volume. And our technicals look real good here. Our PPO is about ready to cross the pink line. PPO is a lot like the MACD, but it works with a percentage of the price. That's why they call it a percentage price oscillator. MACD uses the whole price, and that's looking real good. We just had a crossover, and it is pushing up towards the signal line very quickly. Speaking of very quickly, whoa, look at our RSI. Jumping from the basement floor of 30 all the way up to 62. Looking nice on the four hour. It's come down to that 20 day, one hour view. Well, without looking at today, that is sad. She has been on a serious downtrend. But today, she did break out up over that 50, even broke through her 200 and is right up underneath that 200 right now. And all of our technicals look great. Our PPO is pushing up very strong, just like the MACD. And our RSI is just under the overbought at 68 right now.
looking at that five day five minute so she had a nice strong bounce first thing in the morning she started here at 28 cents went up to about 37 cents you're looking at about 33 percent gains and that happened at 10 20. she did pull back rolled off of her 20-day SMA there, pushed up to 44 cents. That gives you uh, just about 90% gains for the day. Came back down, almost touched her 50, and is bouncing again. She's fallen again as well, and she's right now is sitting on that 50-day SMA. I like this stock, folks. I'm backing out here to the 30-minute this looks like she has broken her downtrend. She has gotten through that 200 and is starting to push up and she's riding her nine day SMA. I am excited about this stock, folks. I'm not even in it, but I think this is gonna be a breakout. I think it's one we've got to watch. And they've gotta get the price up over a dollar, so you might see a good strong push from here to there. I would keep my eye on CENN. -E it doesn't cost you anything to watch it. All right, this next stock is pretty interesting. We are looking at a penny stock. I know it doesn't look like it, but we're looking at the warrant for this company. This is a SPAC. This is ticker PMVC, also known as PMV Consumer Acquisition Corp. Now, a SPAC is a special purpose acquisition company, also known as a blank check company. They come onto the market with nothing but a ticker and a whole bunch of money. And they're eager to make a deal. They're looking for a merger or an acquisition, normally with a private company that wants to go public. Now, they've got a certain amount of time to do this. They've got 18 to 24 months to make a deal. Now, when you buy into these companies, you normally have to initially buy in by buying units. Units have their own ticker, PMVC, put a U at the end. That becomes the unit's ticker. What's a unit? It's a package deal. You get one share of stock and you get a warrant. They come together normally for about $11.50. And at some point in time, they will separate the units and then the stock can trade and then the warrant can trade. However, the stock cannot actually trade until they close a deal. This stock may say $10.02, but it's worth $10. What I mean by that is if they don't close the deal within 18 to 24 months, they got to give you back your money. That's right. It is a money back guarantee with a SPAC. If they fail to consummate a deal within the specified time period, investors get all their money back. So if you bought this at $10.50, you're only going to get $10 back. If you bought it at $9, you're still going to get $10 back. But normally you don't see anybody bidding on the stock when big news comes out about a deal they're going to be making. Now they haven't closed the deal yet. They're just talking about it. So the stock doesn't move yet because it isn't activated. So what moves is the warrant. This is the warrant for this company. Just put a W behind the ticker. PMVCW. Now today she finished at one cents with over 200% gains. Now let's start talking about what's going on. First off, you notice this isn't on the NASDAQ. It's not on the New York Stock Exchange. And they did not get kicked off because of a minimum bid price requirement or a bankruptcy. Matter of fact, they didn't get kicked off at all. They left voluntarily. Look at the news right here that came out September 30th. PMV Consumer Acquisition Corps announces voluntary delisting from the New York Stock Exchange. They left on their own. And they've got their reasons down here, but you no, know, here they are on the OTC market. And stocks on the OTC markets do not have warrants. Now, when these stocks coming from the major exchanges come to the OTC market, they bring their warrants with them. But normally they end up going back home and they take their warrants with them. So I don't know what's going to go on with this. But none of that has any reason for why it's running today. Why it's running today is exactly what I just got done telling you. They split their units. Today was the first day they actually split the units so that you could actually bid on the warrants all by themselves. It wasn't possible until today. And boy, were people excited. Let's go take a look at that chart. 
So let's take a look at this warrant. This is ticker PMVCW. This is all the chart we have, though it is more than I was expecting. We got a high bubble back here of just over two cents, 0 0.0216, and this was on November 18th. Now they just split the units today. The warrants and the shares can now be traded separately. So I'm not quite sure how this is all possible, and I'm not going to really worry about it. Let's jump into that five day, five minute. Let's look at today. So this is Friday, I think it is. This is the 16th of December. She was at one cent. She opened up today at double zero six five, fell down to double zero one one, and then rolled right back up 900% to that penny mark. And right now she is sitting there looking juicy to me. Why? I know the chart doesn't show a whole lot, but there's not a whole lot to look at. So let's look at what there is. First off, I see power. I see a crossover on our PPO pushing up. Our MACD is showing power. It just crossed the signal line and it too is pushing up. And our RSI has worked its way up from 40 up to 55 roughly. But more than that, I am seeing this price. That price is one penny. That is a brilliant price to buy in at. What happens when this goes to a mere two cents, just the next digit up? I'll tell you what happens. You double your money, you make 100% gains going from one cent to two cents. And if it goes to seven cents, you made seven times your money. And I'm not just blowing smoke up your dress there, folks. These warrants don't just move a penny at a time. They're not stocks. They jump a little bit of volume and boom, you've got a surge and you can make some huge gains on this. So I see some power. I see this just coming onto the market for the retail investors. And if they come out with any news about a deal that they're thinking about making, a letter of intent or anything, the stock isn't going to move. It's going going to be the warrant and it will move big, fast and hot. So PMVCW, it showed you what it can do. It's at a perfect price. It might be a good time to put this in your watch list or even consider an entry. Yeah, I'm considering it. Now here's a stock that had a great day. Started it off with some big news. Volume started pouring in. They did about 300 trades today. The charts were churning and burning. Pushed that price up to near 400% gains before she started to fall back. This is ticker COSG, Cosmos Group Holdings. Finished the day just a little over four and a half cents with 120% gains. She is on the pink tier and current, has a transfer agent verified, but we don't yet see a verified profile. We would like to see both of these ticks, especially if we're going to get into it for a long hold. But if you're just trading these stocks, short swings, day trades, this sort of information isn't going to bother you whatsoever. Now we do have a description here, but it really isn't saying what's going on. The company is primarily working through one of their subsidiaries now. Coinlectables. Coinlectables is a business that is working with art. They tell us that Cosmos is in the business group that operates two business segments, arts and collectibles and financing. They break it down like this. Through Coin Collectibles, the group provides authentication, valuation, certification service, sale and purchase, hire purchase, financing, custody, security, exhibition services to art buyers through traditional channels, as well as through leveraging blockchain technology through the creation of digital ownership tokens. They call those DOTs. With subsidiaries licensed under Hong Kong's money lender ordinance, the group currently primarily provides unsecured personal loans to private individuals with a small portfolio of mortgage loans. The group is integrating the two business segments by offering secured financing services to prospective art and collectible purchasers to provide a one-stop arts and collectibles purchasing and financing experience. Kind of interesting there. They're doing all of this artwork to get money so that they can loan it out and make money on interest. Two businesses working hand in hand. So what is the relative volume today around this news that came out? 
actually pretty decent. She was normally only doing 102,000 shares a day. That's kind of under the radar, isn't it? And today she did almost 3 million shares. You're looking at 30 times her normal volume. She was definitely catching attention. Share structure. All right, I did dive into the most recent financial to see if I could find it, my new habit couldn't find it. So we're going to go ahead and presume that roughly we have 30 million in our float, which is pretty decent because the outstanding shares is 410 million. All those other shares, those are being held by insiders. Isn't it nice to see the management and investing in their own company? Let's take a look at those disclosures, see if we have anything recent here. Ah, yes, we do. We got an 8K that came out yesterday. An 8K is a material change. I love these. I just dive into them and all you got to do is scroll that much and you can see the headline of what it's about. But I know what this one is about. This correlates to the news that came out yesterday, but the news paints a prettier picture. So let's just jump on into that news. This is what came out yesterday. Coin Lectables, a fully owned subsidiary of Cosmos Group Holdings, will be showcasing a curated show of the four most exciting emerging artists from Southeast Asia. Here's their names if you want to attempt pronouncing them. They go on to tell us here that the co-presentation for Art SG between Coin Lectables and Art Seasons is a good marriage of art and technology. Hence, we are looking forward to showcase our art and tech expertise to the 40,000 strong visitors who will be visiting this fair. This presents a great opportunity for us to not only feature the works of the emerging artists we are working with to help them gain exposure, but also to allow our art buyers and collectors the chance to experience our 3D technology in person. Visitors to our booth will be treated to an immersive art experience and they will be able to purchase our 15.6 inch 3D tablets which will contain a 3D art dot and a limited edition signed print by the artist. I believe our 3D art dots are one of the first to be launched in Singapore which will give Coin Lectables a strong foothold within the art scene in the region. And if you're really interested in these artists, each one of them has got a little bio right down here so you can learn more about them. But that's the news that had it running. You want to see what it looked like? Let's go to the chart. Yowza! I feel like I'm over at Six Flags just getting off my roller coaster ride that's just finished. This is COSG six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here of $5.20, which fell all the way down to a buck. And right now, four days ago, we hit a low bubble of just about a penny. Now this high here, this is back in, oh, I don't know, April, and we got four months here of no trading. I mean, I know she's fallen, but you can tell that's not open market trading. This is open market trading. And she started off from that dollar and ran all the way to $4.44. You are looking at 444% gains. She then gave all of that back plus some, had another drop and has been laying down here for a very long time doing nothing. Volume has just now gotten strong, but the technicals really don't have anything to say on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour. All right, the price was very lazy here, just waiting for the 200-day SMA to get close. Once it got close, the price got bashful, ran down here and hit a low bubble, and sat down here for two days. Now, yesterday, the volume did start coming in, though the price really didn't show a whole lot of activity. Today, there was lots of volume and lots of price activity. She jumped from... Uh, Oh, just under two cents up to eight cents. That is that 400% gain. And she crushed all of her SMA. She did break the 200, though she has fallen back, sitting on top of her nine, floating on top of the 50. Now, I don't expect her to run the first time she gets through the 200. I mean, she could, but not normally. Think of it as coming up to frozen ice and you got to break a hole in the ice. This was a successful breakthrough, but it's not a big enough hole to get through. So she'll come back at it a second time and break a bigger hole and that should give her enough to bounce up on top of. So don't trust the first bounce, but the second or third, be watching those 
Our technicals, well, we finally got some strength in the picture. We've got a crossover on our PPO, though she has planed out. Same thing with our MACD. It has pushed up over the signal line, and it too is planed out. RSI was real hot, but it has had a pullback just because of that right there. Five day, five minute. Well, it doesn't look like the news came out at the beginning of the day because she didn't start running until about 11 o'clock in the morning. And when she started, it was a nice casual run, folks. Look, she's sitting on top of her nine-day SMA. Super weak, cracker-thin SMA. Never came through it, not once. Hit that high of $0.08 cents at about uh, 20 to 2. Came down, hit that 20-day SMA looked like she was actually going to launch off of it and tricked us. Came down here to the 50-day SMA and the technicals say she's not done falling. That's what they're showing right now. Now, I would anticipate a bounce off of this because of the news and the way people are feeling now because things are happening but it's a coin toss at best. COSG wouldn't hurt to put it in your watch list. Now, in my layman's opinion, I think all three of these stocks have potential to give us some gains. COSG, it is a coin toss. I'm not real sure how much more she'll give us without more catalysts. That warrant, PMVCW, I'd keep my eye on it. That first piece of news comes out, this thing could jump hard and you could make hundreds, even thousands of percent gains. So yeah, lots of potential on the warrant. But honestly, my favorite one is CEN. N. I think it's lined up for a breakout. I think right now it could be ready to take off. Where the warrant, we're not quite sure when, but when it does, it probably will. So do your own DD, folks. I'm giving you a heads up. I'm showing you things to consider. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.